Alright, I'm going to do a video on uh, how I did my 2020 bed with the rollers instead of using linear rails. I don't know if you can see that or not, but they're on rollers. And the thing about it is, is it makes it a whole lot stiffer. As you can see, it just just zero movement. And there was so much slop and linear bearings with the eight millimeter rods. Um, I've been doing this for a while. I actually didn't think it was going to work as well as it does. It works very very well. I've been using it for about seven eight months now, six seven months. Um, I haven't touched it since. It's been absolutely perfect. Um, by doing this, believe it or not, I only lost one millimeter of space, which is not bad at all. But I'm going to show you how I did it, how I mount it, how it works, and let's get to it. Okay, what you're going to need is some rails, all of this stuff. you got to print all of these, except for these two nuts, which I was testing with. You will need, and here's the big key, eight of these little mini wheels. Now these are the Open Bills mini wheels. There are some knockoff brands. I tried them. I don't recommend them. You actually need eight of these. Okay. Uh, you need four of these printed mounts that I've designed. And you will need two of these, which is actually a turnbuckle of sorts. And you will need a bed. You're going to need aluminum one of these. If you already have one, that's great. If you don't, don't try and do this with the acrylics. The acrylic is not strong enough. It'll flex because of the way this is trapped. You will need some of these. At least eight. And you will need the little T-nuts, which you probably can't see little T-nuts and little 8 millimeter screws. 8 millimeter screw, T-nut. Now, you can get the slide-in kind, because this is actually open in most cases, or you can get these turn-in little T-nuts. Uh, I believe that's it. Obviously, this will have to match your bed, or you'll have to make your heated bed, if you're using a heated bed, match to it. Either way, um, you'll also need some tools. You will need Allen wrenches, or hex wrenches, or hex tools. These are nice ones, but any old hex tool will work. These just make it a little easier. But you will need them. You will also need either an adjustable wrench, or a socket, or a um, box end wrench to match the lock nuts that come with these. Now these lock nuts, if you get the actual open build, the lock nut actually comes with the wheel. It also comes with two washers. One of them goes inside, one of them you'll be using on the bracket. Um, what else? I think that's it. Did I miss anything? Maybe. I'll edit it in if I did. You need all this. <laughs> Alright, let's get to it. First things first. Now, I'm going to just do this as demo because I'm not going to actually tear apart my existing one because, well, it works and I don't want to have to take it apart and redo it. So, the first thing you're going to do is print all of this stuff. Now, it's actually pretty easy to print. Works quite well. Print all your parts. First thing you want to do is check everything just like I did here. Now, this is actually threaded. These, these are threaded and so you want to make sure the threading is good now when I print these I highly 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 recommend doing it at a higher resolution or lower layer height um, than you normally print uh, if you print at 0.2 you're gonna want to go less because I find with these threads everything here is threaded I find with these threads 
it quite often um, is a little rough to thread in. Now, these little things here are turnbuckles, and you will have a left threaded and a right threaded. You need to screw these together and make sure they screw very smoothly. They don't when they first come off the printer. So screw them together, unscrew them, screw them together, unscrew them. I've also found, believe it or not, that if you put a drop or two of rubbing alcohol on it, if this is PLA, there's no point in really wasting money on or time to do it with anything else. You just do it with PLA. Um, if you put a little rubbing alcohol as you just work them in and out, see that one's a little too tight, but I'll make it work. Um, if you put a little rubbing alcohol on them, they will function smoother. So pre-assemble all your little turnbuckle parts. Make sure everything's smooth. Also build your wheels. I got four built here. Okay. Mini wheels. Let's build one of these. This is what comes in the open builds little pack. You get the two bearings, two washers, a nut, and the wheel. You need to put a bearing in, and they just press right in here. You put a washer. This is very important. God, I was such a moron, and I forgot the washer on a few of them. Put the washer in the middle, put the other bearing in. That's it. Here's the nut. Save your nuts. Save that spare washer. And I've lost some, so I actually bought a whole bag of just spare washers. <laughs> So, you need eight of them. So, let's build eight of them. Fast forward now. First bearing. Washer. Second bearing. Save all your washers and nuts. Yeah, it's correct. Save them all. Because you will use them. Right, let's put all that aside. Okay, back to normal speed. Now, you have all these parts here. First thing you're going to do is, again, test fit all of these. Make sure they thread in there. And it might take a little finagling, but it does. Take your nut. This is an M5. Slide it on there. Take one of your washers. Slide it on next. Now, depending on your printer, if your printer layer height is just slightly off, you may have to put two washers on there. And then thread this sucker in there. Fast forward. Seen it? Make sure the wheel spins. You don't want it binding, grinding, or anything else. But you don't need to over tighten that. There's another nut. Another nut. Another washer. These are actually threaded. When you print this, this is threaded for this very reason. And there's a reason behind it because you want the wheel tension between the nut head and the body here, the block, to be slightly different than the tension between the nut that holds it to the plate and the block. It doesn't need to be quite as tight between the wheel. That's why the block is threaded. Make sure the wheel's smooth. Make sure 
freely, no roughness, none whatsoever. If there's any roughness, actually crank it down a little more and then back it off. But it shouldn't have any roughness, period. And there you go. There's one of your little carriages made. Now this is going to go in here. But the problem is, is most of these are made for 4 millimeter. Now you have to choose where you're going to go. I highly recommend doing all four. You can cheat, save a few bucks, and do just three. You can do these two and these two. Now this truck is going on the outside. These holes, where it goes, I don't know if you can see that. The holes where it goes are actually made for M4 instead of M5. So we're going to have to drill it out. So you also need a drill and a drill bit. Drill bit. Magically appear. One of these three. You're going to want a set of these two when you're doing this. It'll make life a whole lot easier. Zero. This is 5.25. This one is 5.5. This one is 5.36. Let's go with the 5.25. Drill bit. Drill. Really don't need this big a massive drill. I just happen to have one because that's what I do in real life is beat on stuff. So, what you're going to do is drill out the holes where you're going to mount these. Now these are going to go just like this. Okay. The open face of this rides along this outside edge. The wheels point in. So, in all reality you want to get as far out as you can. So, I'm going to do these two holes, these two holes, these two holes, and these two holes. Now, this is aluminum. You drill in here. So, it's going to have little metal shavings. Use caution, be safe, wear eye protection, do it slow. As you can see, I don't know if you can or not. Is it's going to make a little metal shavings. And again, do it very slow. There's the aluminum. For two reasons. One, it keeps the shavings from going all over the place. Two, it keeps you from putting a drill bit through your hand. Now that that's all done, be careful of these metal shavings. They will hurt you. They will stick into you. They get underneath your skin like little slivers. And they are the most annoying thing in the world. this anymore. Alright, our bed has now been prepared. So, the rest of this is rather easy. You just take the truck, slide it in there. You should probably, I highly recommend just taking a file and smoothing these off. I actually did it pretty well, so I'm not going to bother considering this is not an actual assembly for me, but I highly, highly recommend. The truck goes in like that. Can you see it? We did. Truck outside. Then you take a lock nut. The lock nut comes with 
the open belt. Put it on there. Comes with the wheels. These wheels come with lock nuts. Use them. That's why we're using the five millimeter screws instead of something like a four or whatever, because that's what the wheels want. Then you need either a socket or um, open that wrench, something along those lines, to tighten it down. And of course, now I gotta go get that. Okay, you can use an adjustable, you can use a box or open end. I do recommend using a socket, and here's why. So use a socket. You don't want to tighten this nut bolt to the block anymore. It's threaded. Your tension on the wheel is going to be your difference. It's going to be different than your tension between the nut and the plate and the block. So all you're going to do, oops, I get the right one, is hold this so it doesn't tighten anymore. Of course, if I was better set up, this would go a little better. So you just want to hold the nut and the bolt, excuse me, and tighten the nut. So I'm struggling because I'm trying to do it so you can see what I'm doing. can put a washer under here it's really not necessary where it's an aluminum plate um, you can I find it's actually better in this case if you don't unless you use a bigger washer you want a bigger washer so you have more surface area keeping the whole thing from twisting as much and that's it for that do all four all right when all done you should have this now you can actually use shorter screws these are just ones I happen to have bolts um, when you're all done, they need to be solid, nothing moves, but the wheels all roll smoothly. And that part's done. That's actually the hardest part. Well, not the hardest part. Now, the next part is the 2020 extrusions. These need to be long enough to fit across your bed. They can be too long. Doesn't really matter. Mine are too long because, well, I didn't feel like cutting them. That's why mine on my printer over there stick out beyond it I don't know if you can see it but they stick out beyond it anyway. so what you do is you just lay them down set the bed on top of them slide them apart well that was easy huh then take these and adjust them. And you want to try and get the threading about even on either side. I don't know if you can see it in the camera, but and it's a little weird because one turns one way and the other turns the other and blah blah blah. But you want to get them about the same. There's little grooves here on these. Those go into the notches. The other thing is, is you don't want to uh, bring them all the way out because you're going to be, wherever your frame is going to mount, you're going to want them out of the way. And then make sure they're approximately the same. And just slide it in there. There we go. Yeah. 
You're almost there already. No, just spread them. sure the wheels are in the actual regroove. Right, this is too tight over here. This is too loose over here. Too tight, so we loosen this up. And we tighten this one up. Heads. Now, yeah, once you get it about right, and actually the first time I did this, I laid it down on the table and I drew two lines. And then you can adjust the actual length of these. Or, you can do like I'm going to do here. Just bring it out and then slide this one that way oops yeah, that didn't work so well just get them close to lined up now the thing is they don't need to be exact It's nice if they are. Because you're never going to travel the full length of it anyway. But that's a pretty nice movement there. Slide this one out a little bit more. Now, I'm going to make it exact. Once I know what is good, there's no play there. we got zero play. It rides smoothly. It's a little tight here which some of it might be, it's just hitting this. But I like this side better. So, now you take your calipers, and you adjust for the inside. printer. No, 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 I'm not going to take it apart on my printer. I'm going to fake these as my printer. Now this would be the front and the back. Pick it up. Put it down. Line it up. Now line these up just like you would uh, your regular 8mm rails and tie it down with these. Obviously, you got a whole printer in the way, so it's not quite so easy. But that's it. And I'm not even going to get into all that, because if you don't know how to do that, you probably shouldn't be doing this. Then you use these. Now, you don't want to put one on the outside, because the wheel hit it. So, you can put them underneath, and you can put them on the inside. You can actually put three, because you can put two underneath, two underneath, one on the inside of the rail. This thing will not go anywhere after that. Now, also, you need to double check, and I can't stress this enough. If you look right here, I only have one millimeter of height off of that extrusion. If your printer's a little bit different, can you see it? If your printer's a little bit different, or your layer height isn't exactly exact, um, your plate, 
may rub on the extrusion right here very little clearance there I don't know if you can see it in it let's bring this over and see if we can see it see how little clearance there is it's actually not touching if it does touch then you have a problem and this will roll out it, you can see I can roll it when you tighten it down in the roll and be level but that's it and as you can tell this is if I take all the nuts and bolts out it's much quieter than the linear rails it's not perfect but it's definitely quieter than I shouldn't say linear rails it's not linear rails it's linear bearings with the eight millimeter rods and it's that's it there there's your bed made there's your bed rail and there you go you uh, mount the unit on the frame and once everything's all screwed down tight you take your turnbuckles out and you're all set hook up your belts you now have your bed on a 20 ton e rail with rollers wheels which makes it a lot smoother and as you know the only you can hear there is my motor and this is really stiff i mean this is so much better than the than the uh eight millimeter rods it's just unbelievably better anyway it's a little long of a video but if you have any questions or you have any problems let me know it works really well i highly recommend it if you have a 2020 i3 style printer and uh, want to get rid of your eight millimeter rods and linear bearings all right one last note is the idler pulley mount the carriage and the motor mount um these have all been designed by me to adjust for height and if you look my belt right there is fairly straight it's not absolutely 100% perfect but it's darn close um, it's a straight plane it's not flexed up or flexed down making the whole travel much more accurate and much easier and smoother um, a lot of them you'll see like the idler is high or low and as the carriage moves over the belt will will change an angle it'll be really high at the carriage or really low at the carriage and the belt has to flex in a funny way as it travels back and forth um, with these three items i have designed the again the idler the idler block the bed carriage and the motor mount um, they should be all in a nice even plane if you mount them to the 2020 frame uh, they're extras. You don't need them, but they help.